Okay, welcome back to Sanitary Maintenance. Today, this is going to be an all-in-one video here on cast netting from a pier. Uh, whether you're a seasoned person that does it a lot from a pier, uh, or someone just learning, I'm going to cover pretty much about everything you need to know on it. I have more time on this than most people have on their job. Uh, I'm sorry if I sound a little forward or blunt on this, because you can be hurt. Uh, that is something that I'm not responsible for, so whatever you do, you're going to wind up hitting somebody or more or less being drug around by a shark before it's over with. It's just simple. It is what it is. Uh, I do not own a single net that has not had a shark run on it or have been hit by a shark. I just hope that you don't get drug around right along with it. Uh, with that being said, we'll jump right into everything. see what you're throwing at you're really not going to do a whole heck of a lot of good uh, you can use decent polarized lenses I've used several in the past I'm not trying to sell a certain pair of glasses or anything I've used Ray-Bans I've used Oakley I've used quite a few different ones I did settle on uh, Costa uh, Del Mar glasses uh, they actually work very good I use the open water lenses uh, 580 I think it is on them <coughs> excuse me they make such a huge difference as far as you seeing the bait before. If you're on a pier, you obviously have competition. There's somebody else trying to throw a net as well. The faster you see the bait, the better off you are. Our first year using the glasses uh, worked out really well. I pretty much got about all the bait that came at me. Then next year, I looked down the rail. Everybody else is wearing them too, so the competition got a little hard. It's just, it is what it is. Uh, glasses uh, make the difference they truly do especially if you're trying to get mullet uh, in the fall or if you're trying to find mullet in the spring if you fish on the Carolina coast like uh, North Carolina South Carolina uh, the first indication your mullet will be moving from Florida up and they move very fast and very quick uh, if you're trying to catch them you can normally use a six foot net three eighths it's about the only way to get them that's the only way I've ever been able to catch them uh, I've tried a five foot, three eighths. It didn't work out very well due to the fact that it doesn't have quite the spread. They move tremendously fast. Uh, it's just the way they are in the very early part of the year when they start running. That's generally where they run. We're from Florida up to start with. Okay, I'm, I'm really picky when it comes to my fall uh, net, which would be for finger mullet and stuff like that. Uh, I prefer to use Mako with the lead on it. 3 8 that generally works out really well for me. I generally will use 65 to 75 feet on it, right around that area, depending on how far you can throw. And at the end of the video, you'll see just how to load the net, like I'm talking about, and you can get your distance greater than most people can, and a very easier way to do it. But uh, Mako nets, I, I really like them. Uh, some of them are kind of double sewn, it gives a little more puff, which is easier to open. And uh, I'll cover that too as far as opening it up easier. Uh, as far as your row mullet goes, uh, in the beginning of the fall, you will start to see them run really deep. Normally you'll see them between 5 and 10 feet, depending on your vision and your clarity of your water. And they literally look like ghosts. They are very hard to catch too. <clears throat> That's why I change over to a super sinker net, uh, which I have quite a few of them around here. They are really hard to catch. Uh, three quarters I like. Uh, six to eight foot normally works really well. They're very expensive to buy and they're very easy to tear up, especially when you got other predators around that want the same thing you do. Uh, I don't never have too much trouble at the very beginning of the fall run, which you see them deep, but once they start moving heavily is where you're going to run into trouble. I generally try to change down once you see the actual big row mullet running where they're running really, really thick coming up the beach side. They're running from North Carolina 
size down towards Florida. Uh, I try to downsize the net due to the fact it's a weight issue. Uh, I'll go to a six foot, three quarter at the max, no more. No eight foot, no 10 foot, no 12 foot, no nothing. If you hit them right, which you generally will, uh, they're not hard to hit. Once you cast the net, let it simply fall down on them, wait. Once you got it, when you close that net and you'll feel the weight on it, that's a big, big, big amount of a lot of weight to carry it back over. And you're going to have to have help in order to get it back over the rail. Uh, be surprised how many people you'll need. I've had a lot to help me before. I've seen a lot of people's fingers get crushed before, and I've also seen my nets getting hit before a lot, uh, which ain't good, because as soon as it comes to the top, it's free game, basically is, so and that's where they normally start getting hit and torn up really bad. Uh, as far as uh, my everyday on Manhattan goes, I like anywhere from, anywhere from six to 12. Uh, 12 is a little aggravating to throw sometimes because you have to spend a lot of time trying to load it, which I show you. But uh, the only way I can load them is stand on top of a picnic table or something because they're so long. But my six to eight foot, I'm more comfortable with at a three quarters as far as the size of it, with it also being mono as well. All of my nets are mono. Uh, but uh, if you've never hit Manhattan, most of the time, uh, once you cast on a school, they will normally dive down. <clears throat> Just simply give the rope out a little bit more, a little bit more as it's going down, and just simply start picking up on it very slowly. And as you're picking up on it, you'll start feeling and we're starting to do this here. When you feel that, shut it down. Shut it, get them up, get them out of the water quick. Because if you don't, you're going to ask them for more problems. I've had King Mackerel to go through a net before while I was casting it. It's not pretty because you got to set that up. I've had Spanish Mackerel go through them before. Uh, it's not too bad. It's not as big of a hole, but it happens. And I've had cast it on top of sharks before you know, when they moved into the school right when I was throwing on top of them. It come out very pretty. Uh, Manhattan are very aggravating sometimes because you, can't, you lose them. Uh, a lot of times you'll go to cast on a ball of bait and all of a sudden it'll disappear and then it'll turn up way down that way. The reason it is is they go into shock and they'll take and break into single file. Uh, not many people see this, but they will break into single file and they'll actually school right back up again later. If, you can, if you're having this issue or you're trying to nail them, a lot of times if you, get, if you hit them, you can simply get somebody on the other end waiting for them because uh, once they if they go from a ball to single file, back around the side, they can normally get them within time before they move out, especially if you don't have a whole lot of bait around. As far as manhead goes, if you're pier fishing, it's always best to have a buddy the next pier down or the next pier down from there. Simply just communicating from one person to the next pier or to the next pier, which I've done for years, it can tell you how manhating is moving. A lot of times it doesn't move from one way, it'll come in from behind you. You've been spending all day looking this way when you should have been looking this way. Simply knowing which way they're coming from helps you out. And a lot of times the communication back and forth helps a lot. Because just 30 minutes from here to there sometimes takes four hours for them to travel. But sometimes even less time. <clears throat> Especially Manhattan. When Manhattan start moving really extremely fast, there's generally a king involved in them. Uh, it's just the, the way they move. When you, when you get to the impossible stage where you cannot hardly hit them because they're literally, you can literally see their eyes as they're coming at you. Uh, I'm putting all this in here because it's a very detailed video. Uh, as far as catching them like that, it's, it's good luck. But uh, it can be done. It can be done. Uh, I'll go over some of the other tools that I use on sewing, uh, looping, stuff like that too as well on the video. And uh, I'll get right into that too. Okay, uh, we'll clarify something real quick here because I know somebody's going to want to make a comment that sharks don't hit nets or it's impossible. So. This one here has 
been hit more times and sewn up more times. This is one season. Actually, I don't think it made the whole season. I finally just cut the rope off of it and gave up. But this is a very expensive net at one time. Uh, this one here, I did get drug around with. Was it pretty? <clears throat> Normally, if you're lucky, when you're throwing, the shark will just hit this part here. And if he does hit it, you're pretty well home free. But if he hits this part here, he's got you. And if he hits this part here with the rope, which was coming off here, which I took off and put on another net, he's got you too. The best way to get out of that is to try to wrap the rope around something as quick as you can and try to get your wrist out of there as fast as you can. That's the simplest, easiest way. I've been hit quite a few times. I've been hurt really bad. I've been drugged around really bad. I've had people try to help me and they got hurt. So, just say it. Okay, this one doesn't have no 65 feet on it. I've cut it down so I can use it in a boat. But uh, this is my Mako net that I like to use. It's five foot. I'll back up a little bit to get a look at it. Normally when I got to load it, spread it out a little bit here. Like that. Make sure she's nice and clean. This is double knitted. As you can see how puffy it is in here. Like that. Alright. The first load I'm going to show you here. It's up close and personal load. That's the easiest one to do. They're all done the same way, except you're just moving your hand on the net just a little bit. Lock it in on the right hand. Right hand. Rolling it up here. Just looping the line. This is sewn together using the tools. Like this. You don't want it where it hangs up here in any kind of way. You want it flush. Nice and smooth. So it works really well. Alright. Once I have it where I want it, like this here, put the nail on my left hand, spread it out a little bit, up close and personal. We're just going to take and grab it right here. Just like so. Right there. About that much hang off but up close to the perfect. This is the fish right off the other side down there. Okay, simply taking the net as you can see here. I'm gonna roll it around just a little bit there, pick it up like so, walk it in like this here. I'm gonna lay it right in my hand, right over everything else, just like that. Pretty well covering everything on the back. A rope's free. Simply one hand. Literally one hand. As you're letting it go, you'll notice that the net will spin. See how it spins? It's already loaded itself. What's going on now is when you do release it, it's going to spin. All right, up close and personal, <clears throat> you have a lot here hanging out, so Naturally, it's going to open quicker. Now, say we're going to throw another 10 feet away, all right? Same way. Now we're coming down just a little bit more, like so. Now we have a little bit more excess here hanging off the back side there, like so. All right, same thing, picking up here, turning it like that, simply. Lay it right in top of here, like so. Everything's nice and open now. Just simply grab it, no certain distance. Nice and opened up now, and it will open up perfectly. Long distance casting. We're gonna come down a little further. See what's what's going on now is you're creating a ball. As soon as this net hits the air, it's going to want to open up. The further you go down, the more distance you're going to get. There's a limitation there on how far you actually can go. So we're coming down a little bit more. Here. We 
We don't want this to exceed that. Okay? Same thing. A little twist in it there. Pick it up here. There we go. About that area. And we're going to lay it in the same exact way. This one's got a hole in where I got hung on the stuff there. Same way there. Just like so. And when you go to release it, you're just simply just nice little spin. Remember, you're launching. Uh, a lot of people want to throw straight at the bait. That doesn't work very well. Uh, if you're going after a mullet, mullet can generally sit really, really quick. So you want to be able to launch as basically dropping a bomb is what you're doing. So you're basically coming up this way here and timing it as it falls into the water. You will be much more successful doing this and you'll get much more greater distance throwing out like you're launching an arrow through the air landing on top of the bait. If you try to go straight at it, you can pretty well forget it unless it's up close and you were doing an up close load. But I, I'll demonstrate this here real quick once I get the door open and the camera changed around. Okay, it's going to be up close and personal for him. <clears throat> My right hand here, rolling up. <clears throat> Not sure if you can hear me. I got poor audio, so I'll come up here. This is up close and personal through here. So basically getting it rolled up here. As I'm going to throw, I will be throwing like this as I'm, I'm actually creating spin the net's in my hand and I have the other part here in my hand I'm just simply doing that you already have the net loaded already as it is as in pre turning it you gotta be careful how much you actually turn it to a lot of times you can turn it too much and it causes the top to spin instead of the bottom just up close and personal I'm gonna basically lob it very slowly, to give you the idea. Grab it here, like before. Pick it up on the back side here, ready to go. Spun around a little bit. Just like so. Come in just a little bit. Bob. Nice and easy, deep and easy. All right, now we'll do a little longer one. You see it opened up really nicely, basically by itself. I give it very little effort. All right, now we'll do a little medium cast here. Get it reloaded right. Sometimes the rope wants to get twisted if you want to get that out. Easiest way to do it, go back to the net, do this here. Just go backwards. Whatever twist you got in it, it'll generally come right out. All right, back to my area here. Load it up again, all in the right hand. I'll get some of my tools next, on top of that. Okay, we'll come down a little bit this time. Let's spread it open, make sure we're not getting tangles. Alright. Get it nice and still. We'll go to the middle this time. Spin a little bit. Get what we want. Lay it in just like we did before. I like it completely covering everything. A little bit more distance. Don't be surprised to start running out of rope. Basically launching upward and turning as I'm going, okay? Now we'll do a longer distance. Going to longer distance. I'm coming on down. Watch 
much in my area here. I don't need to exceed any further than that. Spin a little bit here. Take it out a little more. Tangles out. Laying it back over again the same way. Completely covering this here. Alright, now we're simply launching upward as you go. Smaller now than it was before. Don't get any easier than that, folks. Alright, we'll get into the tools next. I gotta go collect this here, come back, and I'm not sure if you can see that, that's damn good opening there. Very easily. Okay, like I said before, this is a very detailed video. Uh, I like to discuss something that uh, a lot of people like to talk about. Uh, there's a lot of people that really want to cast net that are unable to physically. Uh, I have a, quite a few friends that are like that. And it's not because they don't want to, they just can't. Uh, I've been down myself before. I have actually shattered my elbow, my wrist, due to the fact that I changed piers and went from a rail that was this high that I was launching over to a rail that was this high. And the result of it was me loading the net, hitting it as hard as I could, shattered my elbow, shattered my wrist. Some people have problems with the just, they're just too scared to throw, or, or they may just not want to throw. So do not frown on people like this. Uh, they are the best helpers you could ever ask for. If you're throwing for bait, they're generally there, you know, to help you get the bait back in or help you get it to the tank or wherever, especially if you're carrying mackerel fishing. Any help that you can, can take with you is good, but only allow your help to come to you after you've got the bait. You don't never let nobody bring no bucket with them, you know, while you've got a net. That's always a bad look. You don't take a bucket to catch bait. Plain and simple. But, uh... Over some of the tools that we have, this is a sewing needle for nets. Basically wrap the line around it, get it loaded there like you want it, and you can take and tie this into it here. And as you're going along and you're sewing it, you can kind of pull the line off like this and sew it up. There's all different ways of doing it. There's a lot of videos on this on YouTube, and you can find them. That's just basically what that's for. I've used this a lot. That's very, very cheap. These parts here, they come in different sizes. They're like little fingers here. Different ones. Different sizes for different ropes. And what you do is you take in, when you're sewing your loops in or however you're wanting to do them, which I recommend you learn on your own. It's the best way. You basically cut the rope and you take in, just take a lighter and barely light it enough so you can take and smooth it down and you insert it inside of these holes here. And once they're inside of the holes, there, you can take and sew it in like you want it. This is a craftsmanship of basically learning how to do your own thing with your nets. Uh, this is very handy and very helpful, especially if you're trying to fix it to your wrist or you're trying to hook one rope together or two ropes together, three, four, however many ropes you need to make it the length you want it. Not all peers will let you cast nets. I know that for a fact. Uh, there's quite a few I've been told where I cannot cast, and there's some that will let you cast. Always kind of look out for the other person, especially if they're uh, fishing and the bait's coming to where that. Always ask. That's always best. I have never came out positive anywhere where I was going to throw and somebody was fishing. Uh, I've had best luck, as in, you know, I may not be paying attention to where the bait is at the moment, but the person that I asked would generally come and let me know, hey, there's bait here. You know, hey, there's some bait right here. It works better that way. And sometimes you give them one or two fish and whatever you call, you know, that's even better. And if you're throwing for a row mullet, always think of other people that like to eat them too. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that like to eat them. I've ate them, they're actually pretty damn good. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, another thing, this is what I prefer, uh, palm olive. Uh, any anything that has calcium in it uh, to give it strength. Uh, I'm really bad about soaking my nets. I'll take them and put them in a bucket with 
water and some palm olive in it, they seem to last a whole lot longer. Uh, this is my to-go-to as far as cleaning. Rinse them out real good with a hose when you get home. Take your uh, bucket, start put your some palm olive in there. Uh, it's, they say it's good for the nails. It's also good for your net too. Anything with calcium in it because it makes the net stronger. If you own a pool, you know what calcium does to the liner. It makes it very strong. Also helps keep these nets nice and strong. As far as me using them, say I decide I don't want to use the net anymore, I will take and basically clean it very thoroughly, let it dry thoroughly, and put it up inside of a bucket and seal it so there's no more air getting into it. Some of them, they're just no use for. You can't do nothing with them. But getting a smell out now is a whole different story. Let's sit with it. This stuff here I have learned. Unstoppables. You take and pour some of this stuff inside of, of your bucket while it's soaking. And you've been hitting man-hating. Which, you, if you ever hit man-hating, you put an ad up for the next day, you will guaranteedly know what a funky smell can be like. This stuff will actually get rid of quick. Uh, just simply put it in the bucket. Uh, put you a little bit of this in there. Uh, I, this is probably three years right here of stuff pouring in a bucket. Just a little bit is all it takes. And when you go to throw it, be sure to rinse it out before you take it to the beer because you're going to be smelling real lovely if you don't because everybody's going to smell it. Like, Man, he'll it smell nice, but it is what it is. This stuff actually works on getting the smell. But I like keeping my nets inside of water. Uh, soaking wise uh, having the palm oil there I might put a, a few of them little pellets in there to give a little bit of smell them I don't need a whole lot uh, it basically works real well so I would say that's pretty much on the tools other than glasses uh, like I said I've tried the Ray-Bans before this is my oldest set one of my oldest sets uh, I, there's another set I have too of Oakley that no, they were Ray-Bans that went over. I guess there's a black drum wearing them right now. But uh, as far as this is uh, Costas, uh, this is one pair that's kind of so-so. They have the black lenses on them. I didn't care for them too much. But the open water lenses, I like the most. Uh, I learned if you want to take care of them, always put them back in here. This is the best thing you can do. This pair here is probably... Uh, this is when it still belonged in Daytona Beach, the Costas. Uh, you can see how bad the oxidation is on them here from the green on the inside. Uh, the sun faded bad. These are the open water lenses. Glass, I will say. It's probably my 10th or 12th piece here on the back here to keep them together. But these are my to-go-to glasses. They were given to me by my wife and my daughter. And I really like them, and I have taken very good care of them. Uh, the next pair I buy will have to be the prescription. I can't see very well anymore like I used to. But these are some of the tools that I like to use and things I like to use. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, give it a thumbs up. This is as detailed of a video as you can get for the East Coast wise on as far as throwing a net or anything else. If you have any questions, please buy all oh, the nets. Uh, the super sinkers I would use them were bets. I forgot to mention that as well. Uh, but if you have any other questions, please leave a comment. I hope this was very helpful to you. And you have a good night.